Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's video is from chapter number 17 of Mr. Alexander Sadiku's book. And this is regarding Fourier series circuit application. Here we'll be solving example 17.6. And this is on the request of a student. So the question says, let the function ft in example 17.1, remember this is example 17.6, so they are taking the function from 17.1, which is actually this function, this is a square wave function. This be the voltage source vst in the circuit, so this voltage source is basically uh, uh, this is square wave signal. Find the response Vt of the circuit. So we have to find the output response across the inductor. So let's solve this. First of all, uh, the square wave we can write in terms of a Fourier series uh, as shown here. And you can refer to example 17.1. So these are the various uh, harmonics components. This is the DC one, then the first harmonics, third harmonics, and fifth harmonics, etc. So this represents the uh, periodic square wave signal. Now this can be further uh, uh, um, simplified by let me just write uh, one over one here, then. 2 pi we are taking common, so 2 pi taking common it will be 1 over 1. Here also if you take 2 pi common it will be 1 over 3. Here also if you take 2 pi common it will be 2 pi into 1 over 5. So writing this way, now we can take 2 over pi common, so 2 over pi common. So this is what is left inside the bracket. And that, this we can represent by the summation sign. So summation starting from 1, then 3, then 5. So we write k is equal to 1 to infinity. And to represent the odd number, we use this symbol 2k minus 1. And let's try when k is 1, it is 2 minus 1 is 1. And k is 2, it is 2 to the 4 minus 1, 3. So it is this one. And when k is 2, uh, so 3, it will be 6 minus 1, 5. So this is how we convert the uh, odd numbers into variable forms. And then with that, sine pi t here, then sine 3 pi t here, 5 pi t, and that means here also we'll write 2k minus 1 to represent 1 or 3 or 5. So this is our equation. And uh, the final form is like this. We can write, instead of 2k minus 1, we can write n. So writing n for 2k minus 1, this will be the equation which we'll be using subsequently. Okay, so we were here. And now if you see, there are two portions actually, this is the DC portion and this is AC portion. So keeping in mind the uh, superposition theorem, we can use DC first and then AC. So let's say we are applying the DC portion, then what will happen to the circuit? We know for DC the inductor becomes short circuit. So this is half volt input, inductor short circuit the voltage across the inductor will be zero because uh, there will be no voltage drop across the short circuit. And now coming on to the AC part, how do we apply this? Now to apply this, we have to convert the circuit into phasor form. And we know for converting phasor form, sinusoidal signal has to be in cosine form then we can directly convert. Now our signal is in sine form, so we have to convert this into cosine form. And for that, uh, 
I use a formula, I have given a technique in uh, many of the videos that when it is sine, you add minus 90 to convert into cosine. So we are using minus 90, we assume this, this one has a zero angle, so zero minus 90. That means our the nth harmonic or any harmonic will be 2 pi over n. This is the magnitude and we take angle from here. We're just following this Vm angle theta, that is the magnitude angle theta. So this is the magnitude from here and angle uh, 9 is 90. And now we apply, uh, uh, also we convert the uh, uh, um, inductor in with j omega l omega here is n pi you can see this is omega sine omega t so n pi l is 2 so uh, this uh, the inductor will be now j2 n pi our phasor circuit will look like this j 2n pi pi ohm remains same and the voltage in phasor form is as shown here Now, to find V out, we can just apply uh, the voltage division rule. This is the total voltage divided by the total impedance and multiplied by this impedance, J omega ln. So putting in these values, Vs is uh, this value, then 5 plus J 2 n pi multiplied by J 2 n pi. We need to simplify this now. We take this up and we have to keep this in mind uh, that if you want to write uh, in the form of a R and theta, then we have to calculate the value of R, which is under square uh, under root of x square plus y square. We keep this in mind. This is in the form of x plus j y. So we need to convert this into a uh, polar form for dvn. So we have to find the magnitude by this formula and also we have to find the angle by uh, this formula here. So top remains same. The denominator we are using the formula for a square and then the formula for the angle y over x. So this is 2n pi over pi. And uh, we just multiply the squares, it will be this form. And so we were here, we further simplify. We take the magnitude on one side and the angle on the other side. So this one is the magnitude divided by this. And the angle, when we take this up, it will be negative angle. We are positive here. Now, uh, remember, we had converted uh, this one uh, from j. It, this was 2 j and pi. So for j, we have written angle plus 90. Okay, so now adding all the angles, this plus 90, minus 90, and this one goes up, it will be minus tangent minus 1, 2 and pi. Now solving all this, this is simple, you can see n pi, n pi gets cancelled, so 2, 2 is a 4, denominator, and these two gets cancelled, so this is the angle. And now, this was in phasor domain, we need to go back into the time domain. So if you recall, this was our input signal, and the input signal was limit from k1 to infinity. So in this case, also in time domain, we'll use the same limit from k1 to infinity. And then this was n pi was our uh, omega n and pi t is omega n t. So here also, we'll write omega n t minus the angle of the bar, uh, um, or uh, 
and pi t minus tangent of this. We are just following this, that cosine omega t plus angle. So this is omega t. With that, we will be using our angle, which is minus this form. So this is the answer. And now we not. So we were here, this was the signal, and now we'll try to break it down so we can easily uh, plot it. Now to break it down, we can use k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. But since we had already converted k into n, so we can use n is equal to 1, 3, 5 in this equation. So let's say n is equal to 1, then what will happen? This is 425, 4 for n, we have 1 pi square, cosine 1 pi t minus 10 inverse 2 into 1 pi over 5. Similarly, for when using 3, it will be, for n, we'll replace here 3, 3, 3. And uh, for 5, we use this uh, n is equal to 5, 5, 5. And if you solve this, you will get this answer. And let me take help of a calculator to show you exactly how did we get this answer. I'll just use one um, uh, value. So the first thing you have to do is convert your calculator into complex mode. That is, I like, that is the way it can be done. You can use it in normal mode. Also, there's no problem. Uh, in fact, let's use it in normal mode and see what happens. We have this fraction part. We are using 4 in the numerator. And then we come to the denominator under root 25, this one, plus 4 pi square plus 4 into shift pi, this is pi, and square. So this one is done, we'll get its value, equal sign, the equal sign we get 0 0.4981. So this is how you can get all the three values. What about this angle? Now, remember, this is omega t or pi t. So, we, we are not bothered about this. We just write it pi t. We, we cal need to calculate this value. And for that, uh, let's go to shift minus 10. I'm oh, sorry, 10 inverse 2 pi to shift pi divided by 5 bracket close equal sign so the angle is 51.488 or 51.49 this is pi t minus this angle same way you can calculate all the three angles and now that we have got the values in uh, decimal forms we can easily plot we take a graph and, uh, and uh, the omega axis is, we're taking 0, then pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Now you can see uh, this signal has an amplitude of 4.98. We can say it is approximately 5. So we draw a line at pi. At pi, we drew a line. Then pi 2 is not here, 3 pi. At 3 pi, the amplitude is 0 0.20 or 0 0.2. We have drawn this, and similarly at 5 pi, it is 0 0.1257 or 0 0.13. So this is the spectrum of the output, how it looks uh, in the frequency domain. And just for your knowledge, there's an interesting uh, observation. This signal, we were passing through what is called a high pi high pass filter basically rl rl high pass filter and what is happening we got this output now if you see in example uh, 7.1 uh, this was explained 
that this can be broken down as shown here. And it has a DC component also, and then this magnitude at pi and three, pi and five. Now what is happening when this is passing through this high pass filter, this DC element, this one is eliminated, it is not present here. And because of some attenuation in the filter, the output has slightly attenuated. 0 0.6 has become 0 0.5, 0 0.21 has become 0 0.2. So this is uh, clearly showing that this filter is a high pass filter. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. And don't forget to share with your friends and enemies. Thank you.